my angels and devils animal who may wander here it is amanda christina i just watched the final of game of thrones let's talk about it i know i've not done this before i kind of have wanted to but then i sort of get involved in watching uh katie wilson and practical folks and just i kind of forget to do my own and i need to talk about this this whole season has been smooshed like two seasons worth of info smooshed into six episodes and I kind of felt like the last episode lagged like I was bored in places I was like can we get to a good bit now do we have to sit around waiting and I know there is a certain amount of politics and things like that where there is lots of waiting around and stuff but after the season we've had I felt like they paced it a little slow. I seem to be out on a limb on this. <laughs> um, a lot of people just really loved the pacing. Um, it might be because I am tired and have barely had any sleep, um, but I found it a little slow. I absolutely love the plot twists, and I'm going to tell you this. Look away now. <laughs> if you don't want spoilers, if you haven't watched any of the episodes from season seven of Game of Thrones, especially the finale. Bye-bye. See you later. Come back when you've watched it. Bye-bye. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. I love you, but go away because you're not going to want this spoiled. Bye. Have I given you enough time to go away now? So you've all watched it, right? You're here because you've watched it, right? So I really want to open a discussion about this because I seem to be out on a limb and thinking it felt very slow and very sort of just mm, 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 whereas everything's been like bam 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 this season. I mean there has been some slow bits but it's mostly been full on. Now I really loved what my friend Nerdy Wordy Quirky said, um, Megan, in her video last week so I'm going to put a link to that below where she was talking about um, Arya and Sansa, and I'm not doing this in any particular order because my brain doesn't work that way, um, and how she felt like they had to be setting Littlefinger up because it didn't gel with how Sansa had been treating Littlefinger. And that moment, oh my God, I'm like, you freaking jerk. You're trying to turn her against her sister. What the hell? Forgetting that a wolf pack is fiercely loyal but just that little moment I was like I know something's going on here and I don't think Winter Wing is going to get the upper hand but it still scared me a bit because I just I don't want Arya to die I love her too much I think she is an awesome character I admire Sansa and they have both been through so much to get back to this point and we need to see John and Arya reunite we have to see that 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 you know we need that heart moment um I loved that scene that scene was like you're watching it and you've seen him set Arya up you've seen him sow the seeds of discord you've seen them act out on that but not like because last week Arya handed her sister the knife she could easily have taken her face then so like you saw little seeds but you just weren't 100 percent sure and i really loved how they played that out because it's exactly what little finger would do it's how he would have played it out so in the end that justice holy hell that i uh oh my god the knife <laughs> the fact that that was so amazingly done like I really love how one of the running themes of this season has been sort of coming full circle and justice coming full circle in a way like um, with the sand snake with Elia and was it Elia I can't remember uh, you know um, just with that whole thing with um, Cersei and the sand snake mother and the daughter and there's still two sand snakes out there somewhere we think I think I can't remember I don't remember them getting killed so I might have just missed that or have just forgotten like I kind of forgotten poor Rick, I find kind of forgot poor Rickon last season and yes finally like we got Gendry back I have been asking this since the onion knight sent him off in a boat what the heck happened to Gendry
oh yeah, now we know. <laughs> um, I wonder if he'll feel different about John when he finds out the huge reveal and the, we got that huge reveal in that very kind of intensely squicky moment. Like, I ship John and Danny so hard. Don't get me wrong, but tell me it doesn't make you feel a little squicky when you find out he's her aunt. She's her his aunt. Like, it's... <laughs> and I get that's a whole big theme of Game of Thrones and that's a whole very old tradition and, you know, that's that's how it was back then and in those kind of stories. And But it still made me feel a bit squicky as Bran saying, no, John is not a bastard and he's Aegon Targaryen. Like, what the fudge? He's not Jon Snow. He's not Jon Sand. He's Aegon Targaryen. Like, who knew that his whole name was going to change? Like, I did not even think about it. I was just like, John. John's that he's always going to be John. Um, the bit with him and Theon, where he says, "You always know what to do, and it's always so easy for you." And he's like, "It might look like that from your side of the fence, but it's not because it's not easy." John has had to make some really hard decisions for the right reasons, and. For Theon to sort of go, oh, well, it's always been so easy for you. But then Theon got his balls back and you're, like, rooting for Theon. What the hell, Game of Thrones? What the actual freaking hell? How did you get us to root for Theon when we all hate Theon? I mean, talk about... That was one thing I was not expecting. I was expecting Danny and John. I was expecting Littlefinger to die. I'm sorry. Um, I was kind of low-key hoping that Cersei would just poison all of them. I was like, when Tyrion was drinking the wine, I'm like, oh, come on. He's dead now, right? <laughs> like, I did not expect her to let Tyrion live. I'll be honest on that. But Littlefinger, I had a feeling that it, it was going to be him or Arya and I'm really glad it was him because I love Arya too much. But can we talk about the fact we have a whole season ahead of us with no little finger? What? No little finger. That is crazy to think of because he has he he instigated this whole everything. He set everything in motion. He has been the puppet master the whole beeping time. And there's not going to be any little finger there pulling the strings anymore. Um, Cersei and the Golden Company wasn't da like, am I remembering wrong? But wasn't Dario Naharis the head of the Golden Company, and wasn't he supposed to be bringing the Golden Company to Danny's cause? Am I remembering that wrong? Is there something in my brain that I've wigged out on because they have they have to fulfil contracts and things? Um, I thought she hired the Golden Company or that, yeah, he he conquered the... Go uh, I just, I have memories, vague memories of back and I have watched those seasons over and over. It's just been a while. So much happened. It was so cinematic. It was so beautifully shot. The Ice Dragon. Oh, my God, the Ice Dragon. That is a thing of beauty. Terror. Terrifying beauty. But the wall coming down, oh, my God, that, that was so beautiful. I mean, I knew it was going to happen. I think we might have lost Tormund and Beric Dondarrion, though. I mean, he was trying to get to the bottom, but if a piece of that wall fell on you, I don't think you'd have a shot. And it came crashing down so beautifully. I knew it was coming down. I thought we would get... I thought we'd get something else with maybe Danny. Because pretty much every season till now has ended on an image of her. Um, she's had all those poster moments. Um, her being reborn with the dragons. Um, her falling backwards into the arms of the crowd as they chant mother. Um, so I kind of low-key expected there to be a little more at the end than there was. I mean, I get it. It builds us up. We're ready for the war between the living and the dead um but yeah it felt kind of odd I love seeing Sansa and Arya talking or Arya 
um, talking about um, how they would not necessarily have coped in the other's position. And when Sansa says, you would have coped, you're the strongest person I know. And it was like, oh, you paid your little sister a compliment and it didn't hurt you to do it. <laughs> I love that. I love that interplay because they never truly understood each other. But even though they didn't understand each other, they're still family. And that at the heart is very much what a lot of families are like. We don't have to understand each other. We don't have to agree with each other. But at the end of the day, we'll fight tooth and nail for each other. Um, be it a, friend, a family you've made yourself with friends or blood family. Um, so I have really enjoyed this season. I felt like they did, they, they should have had more episodes. I understand but I feel like we needed more. There, there's stuff that needed to be fleshed out. I actually really enjoyed the moment with Bran and Samuel Tarly. Like, Sam seemed so caught off guard by how Bran was. And it's like, um, what happened to you when you went beyond the wall? Oh, I, become, I became the three-eyed raven. Um, I don't know what that is. I love that sort of innocence to Sam and that he wants to help John, although... He's kind of let John down because John he sent John sent him to become a maester, a maester, but Sam really understands that that is not worth his time and energy right now. There are bigger things and more important things. So I get why he, why he did it. I love that he paid attention enough to know that John is a legitimate child. Like John's grown up being shunned, being treated like a second class citizen for being a bastard, but he's never been a bastard. Um, it makes me wonder if we're going to lose Bran because of the fact that he told Sam and no one else knows. So why is Brandon telling Sam? Except for the fact that we, the audience, already pretty much knew all this. We'd already put a sort of put two and two together. But the, 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 the cinematography is just so breathtaking. Those dragons are incredible. I loved the bit where... Um, Danny arrived at the meeting and she's, um, the dragon lowers his head and she's like sliding off the side of the dragon, like, yep, I'm here. I loved that. That was so cool. John being John, being a true Stark, not going back on his word, not being willing to lie, to deceive or to twist the truth in order to get what he needed. Um... Cersei lying to Tyrion and to all of them. That was like, that's so Cersei, that does not even, like, the bit with her and Jamie, oh my god, I was crying. I was like, no, but like with Tyrion, she couldn't do it. But it makes me wonder if there's some other reason, like if he's going to die on the road, road, um, yeah. I don't know. Like the north. Is he going to die on the road to the north? I couldn't think then. Um, my brain is worrying with so much stuff. So let me know how you felt below. Did you find it a little slow in places? Like the, I get that council meetings are slow. The twist with Euron was really good. I really like that because he did seem like he was being a total coward. And I'm like, that doesn't go with what he, he normally would be. And, you know, let's face it, Theon's the coward in that family. Um, yeah, so I kind of am really curious to see what other people thought. Um, the bit with the hound and, and, um, the mountain, where he's like, it's not your time to die yet. You, you know, you know what's coming for you. And it's like, yeah, it's him, obviously. <laughs> um, I'm really curious to see that battle go down, to be honest. Um. There's so many more things I could say, but this is nearly 15 minutes and this is going to take forever to upload because I can't seem to convert my videos and have my sound in the right place and I do not know why. Anyway, <laughs> let me know how you felt in the comments below and what else you have to add to this season because this season was jam-packed full of explosions and things that were unexpected and twists. Like, you know, we didn't expect Jorah to get cured and suddenly he's cured and you know, so much just is flipping through my head at the moment. I'm really going to have to sit down and rewatch the whole season. So I probably need to rewatch it from episode one, season one, all the way through to the end of this season, because usually when you watch it through, you pick up stuff again. Anyway, so this is sort of my first review, rambling review of 
Game of Thrones or TV shows. I've done a rambling review for Spies of Forever and I really should do one for Solvit Squad when it's finished or at least do some episode catch-ups. I always mean to do these things and there just never seems to be enough time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Please comment below and let me know how you felt, what you enjoyed, what you were like, no, or what got you this season. Um, comment below, as always, like, subscribe, and you know, remember that you are amazing, you are incredible, and you matter. Bye!